Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Dragalia launch video because today we have info for the upcoming Dra uh, Gala Dragalia units for the third year anniversary. There was no way for me to make a better sentence out of that. So I'm going to be going over Gala Cynthia and Gala Bahamut and give my thoughts about them, see what they do. Uh, we're going to be summoning for them tomorrow. There should be free summons. Um, yeah, that's going to be today's video. Hope you like it. If you do. You leave a like that supports the channel a whole bunch. I thank you very much for doing it. You can comment, tell me how you feel about any of these units. How much are you prepared to go in for them? It's two gala banners. No, it's not two gala banners. It's two gala units, so it's gonna require a lot if you need to go pity for both of them. And subscribe to me if you want to hear more from me. I'm hi. I'm Wookie. All right, let's get into it, huh? So yeah, like I said a little bit beforehand, this has. Gala Zethia and Gala Bahamut, who are two new ones, and also feature dragons from past Gala Dragalia summon showcases. Oh wow, so Bars, Folk, Thor, and Cat Sith are also featured? That sounds like a bad idea. I don't want any of them featured. <laughs> uh, I well maybe it doesn't actually mean featured. This is mm, the reason I say this is bad is because you already are trying to get these two new units. So we'll have to actually wait and see for when the, the banner is to see what the percentage wise is. But in theory you want this on a rate up, this on a rate up, and then you want the Gallop other galley units on the banner but not actually on rate up. Because you see now every time you have your dragon, you should have the best chance of getting Bal Galabahamut. But if it's actually shared between Mars, Beast Volk, Thor, and Cat Sith it's going to be a little bit tougher to get Baphomet, and also Galathor is absolutely worse. This would be tantamount to a dead multi if you got Galathor. And I don't even mean, and it's really sad to say, really, and the reason he's like that is because of Nihility. Like, Nihility completely stifles anything that he wants to do, and the same thing honestly goes for Cat Sith. So if these two are featured, you have a 2 in 5 chance of getting something very bad. Beast of Vulcan Mars are very good, and... Bahamut is new, so of course you would want him. So that's enough of the digression. We'll actually know more when we see the banner rates and stuff. So let's go. Gala Zethia. Adventure details. Gathi Zethia now holds the power of Bahamut, the Worm of Genesis. As her pact is only half complete, she cannot fully use his abilities. However, even that portion of his power is enormous, as the price she pays for using it. I'll use this power to secure a brighter future for all. Genesis Circle it. Share before deals damage to uh, surrounding enemies. Uh, during this attack, the user will be immune to knockback, and damage taken will be reduced by 30%. The skill gauge for this uh, skill can be filled by attacking enemies, but it will gradually fill automatically. The amount of time required to fill this gauge will increase each time uh, the skill is used, up to twice per quest. Abilities that increase skill gauge rate will not affect this. And this is the only skill she has. She does not have two skills. Uh, damage is 394 over 5 hits. Skill energy required filled automatically, but when it is a shared skill, it's 6,240. One skill, huh? Okay. Co-op ability strength 10%. Chain co-op ability shadow team critical damage amp uh, equals light resistance 6%. If the team is attuned to shadow, increase their light resistance by 6%. When they have a team critical amp strength uh, damage amp, benefits through a whole team. Genesis Pact Bearer 2. Grants Zethia a summon gauge and changes the shapeshift button into a summon button. Tapping this button summons Bahamut. While Bahamut is summoned, the power of certain standard attacks will be greatly increased, and Bahamut will attack automatically. After attacking a set number of times, Bahamut will automatically use the Cataclysm Beam skill. The damage dealt by Bahamut's automatic attack skills will be identical to the Dragon Bukala Bahamut's attack and skill. While Bahamut is not summoned, certain standard attacks will fill the summon gauge. Swiping to dodge during a standard attack will carry out an additional attack towards surrounding enemies. Performing a standard attack during this unique dodge will then resume Zethia's standard attack combo for her most recent skill. Dodging again immediately after Zethia's unique dodge will instead result in a standard dodge. In addition, Zethia will deal damage to surrounding enemies when she dodges an attack. This attack will only activate once per dodge. Zethia will not unlock a second skill. S Jesus. So this kind of sets up 
Okay, let's continue reading on. Blessing of Creation 2 reduces susceptibility to blindness, which is... She wouldn't be able to get hit by it anyway, she's blind. And Paralysis by 100%. Prov Providential Blade 2. The 5th and 9th attack in Zethia's standard attack combo grants her a critical damage amp and maximum team amp level of 1. The stats shown here do not include increases or decreases due to ability and represent the adventure at level 80 with 50 mana dotes unlocked, not the state when first obtained. Okay. Um... So this unit feels like on the first when you first look you see that she doesn't have two skills. Your first I think you're if, depending on your kind of mood of uh, the person you are you either go one of two ways. You either think, "Oh my god, this unit's going to suck" or "Oh my god, this how good is this unit going to be that she only needs one skill?" My guess is that they only gave her one skill cuz she only needs one skill based off of everything else she's doing here, based off of the stupid way that she gets a crit amp just for attacking, which is maybe the easiest amp to get in the entire game, I'm gonna say. Um, yeah, this is kind of crazy. I think she's gonna end up being pretty good. She doesn't do any other kind of, she really feels like she's gonna be all damage. So we're just gonna basically have to see how much damage uh, Galabama does during this, because it seems like she just summons a dragon and then you basically have a dragon on your side of the field until he decides to just go away <laughs> whenever the dragon gauge goes away. That's my understanding of it, at least. So I can totally see her being just a crazy powerhouse, even with all this stuff. But it's hard to imagine her fitting in the current setup of stuff because she's so different. We've never really had a unit kind of built like this. I mean, we've had units with dodge stuff before but we've never had a unit that like dodges and doesn't attack doesn't have a second skill summons a dragon like all these different things so i think she's gonna end up being pretty damn good and she's balanced this way because if she did have a second skill it would kind of go over the top and because she's shadow and they have a history with shadow they don't want shadow to be too good but in my mind they're still gonna make shadow extremely good with this unit that's my current gut feeling that's what my gut tells me so, let's move on to Galabahamut. Powerful dragon who has existed since primordial times. He wanted people and dragons to have free will and potential, but he lost his body in the fight against the progenitor and can no longer interact with the world. Skills, Cataclysm Beam. Uh, this skill has a unique gauge with three bars attached to the skill button that is filled with standard attacks and dragon strikes while the user is shapeshift. Upon use, this skill's effect are based on the number of Bar is currently filled. One bar deals damage to target and nearby enemies. Two bar deal damage to target nearby enemies and grant the entire team a defensive amp. Three bars deals damage to target and nearby enemies and grants the entire team a team strength amp and team defense amp. Does that mean that Zethia gets this too? That's kind of crazy. Move it on. Ability Shadow Strength 120%. Okay. Almighty Rage 2 fills 50% of the Dragon Gauge at the start of the quest and exchange shift shift shapeshift time by 100%, but doubles the amount of Dragon Energy required to shapeshift. The user's maximum Dragon Energy will not be increased. Also grants the user a Dragon Strike while shapeshift and as Bahamut. This Dragon Strike deals damage to multiple targets and enemies near those targets. The maximum amount of Dragon Gauge that abilities can fill at the start of the quest will be limited to 50% for the entire team. Hmm... So he definitely has, um, I still see a lot of positives with this guy. His one main negative that I see here is that, uh, it's limited to 50% for the entire team. Um, but the rest of him sounds pretty good. This part right here fulfills 50% of the Dragon Gauge is basically a 100%, uh, Dragon Gauge bar because 50% is 100% of the Dragon Gauge bar. And extra shapeshift time is always good. Um, doubles the amount of dragon energy required to shapeshift. That's definitely a negative. Um, but I think the positives outweigh the negatives, man. Shadow strength 120%. You gotta be kidding me. And then the ability here with the right amount of set of stuff for him to give everyone a strength amp and a defensive amp it's pretty good in my opinion. Um, he's definitely looking very solid to me and this is what it looks like Zethia will get when she summons. And if that's the case, I think she's gonna be end up she's gonna end up being pretty damn good too. So yeah, 
that's um that's kind of how I feel about them. Definitely worth summoning because it is Annie, uh, the anniversary, and they both seem extremely strong. They're both shadow, so not only that, Galbaum it will work with plenty of other uh, dragon stuff to a lot of other dudes besides just the uh, because of what he's doing. Uh, it kind of feels like he's also kind of finally summoned his power crept Fatalis. If you somehow had Fatalis from all the way back in Monster Hunter, then I think that this guy probably ends up replacing Fatalis. Because um, again, even with just only 50% of the Dragon Gauge, depending on the team, it's totally manageable. So, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I think these two are extremely good for anniversary units, and I can't wait to summon for them. Uh, I'm really interested to find out more about this. Because I already have plenty of Galathors. I have all of these. So for me, don't include any of them. I only care about these two. So we'll see how this goes. And I'll check it there. Um, but yeah, the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, you can leave a like. I'm going to go back to work now. Because <laughs> I need to go back to work. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good night. And also a good day if, you're, uh, if, you're, uh, if it's the morning or something. Until next time, everyone, goodbye.